In the UK, COBE is part of the BIM Level 2 uh, mandate or suite of documents that sit with the government mandate, uh, which came into force in April this year. And COBE is covered by BS 1192 Part 4 and was released in 2014. It went straight to a British standard rather than becoming a publicly available specification, partly because it's been implemented elsewhere uh, in the world beforehand. The government uh, had three very clear deliverables. Back in 2012, 2011, when they announced they wanted to do BIM, they were very clear about the three deliverables that would be needed for government projects. 2D PDFs, which everybody completely understands, 3D models in whatever authors, authoring software you're using, which primarily most of the people on this call will be using ARCHICAD. Um, so that's your ARCHICAD native model. And this thing called non-graphical data, or COBE, uh, which kind of is the, bit, the mysterious part of the government outputs for many. And as I said, that's covered by uh, the British standards. And that is a, is a good place to start when trying to understand COBE, uh, the context of COBE, if you like. So COBE is actually built off an American standard, uh, and there's actually quite a lot more useful information um, that sits behind uh, the British standard in terms of real technical detail and, and information. So I use this quite often to understand some of the intricacies of COBE. Um, it's a pretty mammoth document. I think, as you can see on the left-hand side, it's over 250 pages uh, of information. Um, I'm not saying it's bedtime reading or something you need to go and look at it tomorrow, but if you want to understand some of the technical information behind uh, what's going on, it's, it's a useful starting point. And there is more information on the government uh, task group, BIM task group website uh, related to COBE, and there's also some very simple plain language questions. What I should probably say is that the COBE's primary aim is to deliver information uh, to uh, at the end of a project, so for in use, uh, for preventative maintenance. So it's only, only focused on the preventative maintenance side, so it has a, a very clear purpose. Going back to 2013, the RIBA um, rejigged their RIBA, uh, rejigged the RIBA plan of work, and as part of this process, they included these UK government information exchanges, which primarily is what we're talking about for COBE. So, in this particular diagram, at stages one, two, three, uh, and six, you would be delivering information to the client, and then the client would be using it during stage seven. But the thing about the, the plan of work is that the, the, the amount of money that's spent uh, for a project is, is pretty small in terms of the amount of cash that's spent in, in design and even construction to some degree. Only 20% of the cost for a reasonable large project is spent in those stages zero to six. And so 80% of that cost, if you've got a 25-year life cycle, is, is spent in, in, uh, in stage seven. So the government's focus really is on in use and how do we how do we reduce the real big chunk of the cost? Of course, we want to reduce it in design and construction as well, um, but that's where the real focus is. And in order to do that, we need to focus on on the very front end in order to uh, generate that benefit. So stage zero is a, is a real key piece to um, moving the whole fo whole thing forward, and particularly with regards to Kobe. Now, there's a document which we published uh, about six weeks ago on our blog, um, which we kind of crowdsourced from various people through social media to help us develop it. And this is really a, a, a document that sets out how the BIM Level 2 documents are integrated with each other. Um, you can go and have a look at that on our blog um, at your leisure. Um, but the important thing that I wanted to get across with this is how the documentation sits in front of um, the Kobe stuff. 